I'm not gonna lie, the secret to drum bounce is What's up, it's Holy. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the secret to getting unique drum bounces in your beats. Now, I feel like this topic isn't covered enough, and that's because it can seem overwhelming or even daunting to try to explain something so complex. But I think it's necessary. Drum bounce is a vital element in tracks. Sure, the melody may bring feelings and emotion, but drums bring energy and redefine rhythm. It's what has you grooving in your chair or jumping at concerts. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some of my favorite recent beats, and they're gonna help explain the concepts and highlight some key factors of drum bounce and I'll also be making a beat later on in the video and going more in depth all of the things I'm gonna tell you apply to everyone and whatever genre you produce if you're new here you're probably thinking who is this guy can I trust him I'm holy aka Jordan I've worked for a lot of big artists if you want to check the exact credits you can go to my Instagram but I've worked with a bunch of huge artists I've been producing for probably about seven years and I am no means a master at this I'm just gonna teach you what I do know. Let's dive in. Let's really dive into why this has a lot of bounce. Shout out Rick Romero for the melody, and it's a super ambient melody. And whenever you have something super ambient, it usually leaves open a lot of space. It just feels not empty but ambient i feel like that gives you a lot of room to play around with your drums make them more complex so i feel like this is a good example so look at the spaces i'm not gonna lie the secret to drum bounce is mastering pockets of silence so for this drum bounce and this is popular in trap beats or whatever whatever genre honestly edm all of that the bass is what is gonna bring that energy it's not really the hi-hats as much like this weak ass low sound isn't really gonna do nothing <laughs> but this 808 is gonna punch you in your chest. So you need to have a good bass. It doesn't matter if it's an 808, it doesn't matter if it's a synth bass, it doesn't matter if it's a sub bass, it doesn't matter. That motherfucker just needs to be a good pattern. And the rhythm in this beat specifically is the rhythm that's so popular right now in, in trap and pop. So many of our modern day songs of trap have this 808 bounce right here, but like with a, a lengthened note. So I took what people are familiar with and I added a little pause and this pause does so much. The same way that this note right here brings tension in, this pause right here brings tension in. There's just so many techniques and so many things you can do to up and down the energy. This is more of the down energy section uh, where the 808 is way more chill compared to this 808 pattern right here. Look at this. So you can see all the pauses, there's more notes in general. It's just way more hyper, way more hyper, way more active at this part. Now the 808 is cool, and this is a fire bounce, right? But we, you need things to support it. As important and as impactful as this 808 is, everything else around it is also very impactful. So we got a simple ass two step for most of the part. And then we have these little rolls that just kind of play uh, at the end of every four bars. And then we have this cowbell that hits on the 808 on this last bar right here. And that just kind of highlights that part a little more. It's just kind of ear candy, but it's all supporting it. Now, what I really wanted to talk about is this hi-hat right here. This adds so much more movement and complexity because it's layered on top of the snare. So this snare is playing. And this hi-hat roll is playing at the same time. So look at this. It almost feels like the snare is like lingering and it just adds for more texture, more, more, th more to work with really more rhythm to it. But notice how everything I have in here that's somewhat complex, like these hi-hat rolls, the 808s going a little crazy. All of it is temporary. I took advantage of the fact that I had an ambient melody and then I just put these hard ass drums on it, went a little crazy from one section and then I have it chill for like the verse where they can actually rap. This is probably like hook. Like motherfuckers basically doing ad libs or saying one word on repeat 17 times. That's the hook. And then we got this verse area where it's way more chill. Like somebody could rap on this for real. Uh, 
And I don't think you need to get nerdy to understand this. There are multiple factors to drum bounce. Like there's repetition. You wanna make sure there's plenty of repetition. So like, that's usually like a snare. Like look at this pattern. It literally repeats the whole time. And then I added a cool little section over here where it has a little bit of a deviation. But look at how much it's deviating though. And notice that it's only for this eight bar section. If some things are going crazy, everything can't be going crazy. If the melody was crazy and it had a bunch of chords and, and top melodies, I would not be doing all of this. I'm only doing that because it's ambient, so there's room to do it. How full can you make it while leaving room for an artist? Or if you don't wanna leave room for an artist, then how full can you make it without making it tiring to listen to, fatiguing? So from this one, we learned that super ambient melodies leave you a lot more room for drums, taking familiar rhythms and twisting them, adding a bit of you to it, just a little bit of spice, you know what I'm saying? That's really what's gonna set you apart. You have to think, how are you gonna stand out? All of these big producers have their own style. How are you gonna stand out? You don't have to generate a new wave necessarily. You don't wanna be somebody who's just replicating what everyone else is doing. You're gonna stay behind that way. And like I said, I'm not saying you need to to generate a new wave but just be you at the end of the day add some shit try experiment with some shit that you would like try altering that familiar rhythm in a way that you truly enjoy you know what i'm saying something that makes you happy all right so this next one is more of a pop track it's a great example of simplicity and repetition all right boom look at how many sounds i used three of these sounds are snares three of these sounds are hi-hats That shit's crazy. I love that beat. Now, notice that we have a very, very, very simple kick and snare pattern. Listen to this. It's so hard to describe, but I'm trying my best. I think that the kicks and the snare just have a good call and response system going on. You know, we have these first three kicks right here. And then it seems like the snares and this kick right here all answer back to this three kick pattern in the beginning. And to make it not so boring, I added a clap as the main source. And then we have a rim shot snare with some reverb on it. So just to add a little layering, a little texture. That's another thing is whenever you're keeping things simple, don't be afraid to layer things because that's how you make it a, a bit unique. And then we add these hi-hats in. So let's see what this sounds like. Um, these are the bottom two right here. Just a very simple two hi-hats in the whole eight bar pattern. So this kind of, I feel like to me, this these hi-hats kind of exaggerate this section with the snare, right? It kind of gives it expression because there's something of before and after. There's, it's like a little mini story, you know what I'm saying? So I think that all of this is just working together. There's no set rule. But what I will say though, is rule of thumb is I try to keep things uh, simple and repetitive for six out of the eight bars. And then we add this other hi-hat right here. And this is very repetitive throughout the whole thing. I think it's the same pattern, uh, just, Actually, there's a little bit of deviation towards the end. You can see this isn't the same as this section, but. And that's cool, it's cool, it's chill. We have one playing when the snare hits, so that adds a little bit as well. Boom, synth bass, and we got this nice little perk loop right here. And this kind of acts as like, almost like a hi-hat, how this, hi-hat would usually be on some two-step shit like this it's kind of acting in the same way as that but a different sound like listen to these small sounds in between the big waveforms so we're looking in this small little section right here in my box pause that that sound is acting like a hi-hat here. It's giving it a bit of motion. I heard that and I was like, all right, bet. So I can keep my hi-hats mad simple because I don't want to overdo it. Boom, and then we go over to this section right here. And we had this fire ass drum loop. I don't know who made it. I think it was off splice, but I stretched it to two times the length and then.
it just acts like a slower hi-hat and then we have a bit of texture here at the end so i thought this was perfect and then even right here we kind of had something that builds up fades out but it all just works together so smoothly everything has to work together this is a structure that you're building think about it visually a structure like a house a building something like that it's gonna have a base you need like a dead ass base i hope you guys got something from this keeping it very simple so i feel like substituting sounds could also be an interesting way to uh change up your drum bounce where it's like you don't have a hi-hat you have something else that's uh, taking place as a hi-hat but it's a lot of repetition simplicity but it all works together you feel me all right let's get into another beat this one is one of my favorites and it might be on a nasty c album yeah i heard it on nasty c's page in a little snippet i'll link it down below if you want to check it out now this is a more traditional uh example but i thought it was very nice because the bpm is very slow for a hip-hop track now this is like a j cole track or like 21 savage type of deal well let me know who you hear on it here we're gonna play a few seconds of it real quick <laughs> Let's hear just the drums. So notice how the 808 hits on some notes where the chords of the piano are hitting in the melody, boom, like that. But it also hits sometimes in the middle on the off beat. I don't know if that's what that's called, but I'm gonna call it that. The second note right here, it's hitting right in this little pocket. So it's just perfect, right? We have things going, filling both spots. Um, and then we have this kick to kind of accentuate it. And it's not always playing on just the 808 notes. We got, we got a little variation going in. So we add this with the snare. That's kind of our staple. That's our life source right there. That's our oxygen. The snare holds a lot of value because it's like what really solidifies that, that bounce. Like it's, it's that center. It's something that you can always count on, old reliable. that already has bounce to it right it just feels a little slow it doesn't really have much sauce or much movement boom so we added this simple little hi-hat pattern now this is a two-step but i added a little deviation where i pause it then i add a rare roll in that motherfucker and to end it off with a roll he like a hi-hat guy kind of and notice the velocities has changed only at one little part so that's my way of keeping it simple but a bit unique but boom let's hear it with this this should give it a little movement Your head gotta be bobbing at this point so now i want to exaggerate the bounce um on this one and three notice that look at that it has a bounce already it doesn't sound too good all by itself it sounds a little dry it doesn't really sound like it's filled up all the way so we added this hi-hat loop that's fire i was like okay bet that could work but let me add another one so it can just feel like it's really full though I just hope you guys see what I'm talking about by like everything is connected. Everything means something like the everything has a purpose. This hi-hat loop added so much body. It has the same purpose as this um, hi-hat right here, where it's like adding movement because it feels slow. This is 114 BPM. That's not that fast. Usually it's like 130 or plus higher than that. So with this two step, it adds movement. It makes it not feel that slow. And this top one just gives body. This one right here kind of brings it all together. It's like the glue. And if you want any of these sounds, they're all in my drum kit, by the way. <laughs> Link in the description. But I haven't gotten to this little uh, open hi-hat, but open hi-hats are like my favorite thing because they bring so much energy as well, being a light sound, but. Like, I just wanna bob my shit every time I hear one like that. I probably sound like a nerd to people who don't make music, but all of it is working together. I hope this one like teaches you that slow BPM doesn't matter. I think slower BPMs can honestly have more rhythm. It's more timing like in between each count to like really add stuff in and fill the gap. So we covered trap and we covered a little bit of pop, but I want to cover a few other genres as well. Just because I know that other genres have different bounces. Obviously, that's kind of what makes them unique. So for this next one, this one was purely done by me. Melody, drums, all of that. So I can really kind of go into depth. All right, let me play a few seconds of this so you can kind of get the vibe of what this track is. All 
All right, yeah, 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 now this track is a banger. I'm not gonna lie, I fucking love this shit. So first off, we have the melody. Let's hear like the rhythm of the melody. Cause melodies have rhythm too. It's just like not as exaggerated usually as drums. So notice how I have like a thin ass ambience playing in this beginning part right here, boom. And then we have the piano chords that come in at the end. All right, so let's add our little basses in, you know what I'm saying? Not the actual bass, but I'm talking like bass of our structure. Let's hear it with the kicks as well. We got our bass, we got like the foundation. We got the foundation. Now let's add some walls to this motherfucker. All right, I wanna talk about this though. So we have this, um, I don't know if, is this called four on the floor? Comment down below, I don't really know any terms. I just kind of know a little bit of something. Oh, that's a hi-hat, I'm tweaking. Where the kick at? Uh, uh. Yeah, this is four on the floor, right? Where it's just, mm, this, this, this tight shit. So we have that kick doing that, and then we have this little kick that comes in right here. But do you see how it just adds so much flavor to that basic ass little, like, obviously, this is nothing new. This is not groundbreaking, but the way I do it, the velocities I put it at, the notes I pick, when I pick to put them in and when I don't, that's what makes it you. So, boom, we got that going, and then we have these toms. I've been loving toms recently, and then this perk, I don't know. Okay, it's kind of like a just a... It gives me like Afrobeat vibes, like an Afrobeat perk. And then I guess this is hi-hats. And it's cool because I added a little looperator, so it kind of is exaggerated on some parts. Like it would not usually uh, have this much character. Like without it, listen to this, how boring it kind of sounds. And then we turn it back on. So now we got the kicks going. We got the toms, toms going with the kicks and our little hi-hat going. And we have this little cowbell and I added a little delay to it, whatever. I feel like if I added this fourth cowbell here to make it like perfectly symmetrical, it would have just been too much. I like how it gives a little break, kind of allows for other room. Now we got the bass. Now I love this genre because the basses are so funky so unique you can add so much rhythm to it so notice how i don't even start with any bass at the beginning right And I know this note is not in key, but it still sounds good. Everything played together. Look at how this perk loop is basically taking advantage of space where nothing else is playing. These little dots in these patterns are where, where notes are playing. And look at this. It's like the parts that are exaggerated the most are usually around parts that are not being played. So it just fits perfectly. It just fits so perfectly. It takes up space, it has a purpose, and it gives more rhythm to it. So now we play it. <laughs> That shit's so gas. Oh, and since you stuck through this video so long, here's a free kit in the description. I appreciate it. And I'm gonna be using the free kit to make the R&B beat example. So now for the exciting part, you guys get to kind of pick my brain while I'm in my creative process. I'm going to be using a free kit that you can get in the description below. <clears throat> Don't forget to check out the other kits on the website too. <clears throat> Let me play you one or two favorites from this pack, just like five seconds each, just real quick, just to show you that that shit's fire and that you should actually go Sorry about that, my camera died. Now shout out to Produced by Max and G Swish for this free kit. They are the ones that were willing to put this on the website for free. So make sure you go check them out, show some love. So yeah, here's one of the melodies that I really like. Oh my God. And 
and that's free. It's the last one I'll play, and then I'm gonna start making the beat. I promise. You. That's beautiful. I'm not gonna lie. So now let's go ahead and grab the one that we want to use. I want to use Pepsi. I heard this one earlier. Uh, like I said, bro, all of the kits that are on my website, I'm going through them personally. I'm making sure that they're not garbage. I'm, I'm not going to put anything up there that's bad, I promise. All right, so let's listen to it. This is what I like to do, obviously, before I get into the drums. I like to kind of hear what rhythms I hear or what rhythm the melody has and just examine it. Let's, let's listen to it. Okay, so they have a snare in there. There's already a set bounce, low key. All right. I like that. I like that. That's fire. That's fire. We're going to take the stem so that way we don't have those snares in the beat as well. well. Let's structure it out a little bit real quick. What I'm thinking first is I I know I definitely want to put some toms in there. I've been loving toms, like I said. Y'all ever, you got so many kits where you just don't know where you're at? God damn. Oh my God. I got to delete some of these. And what I want to try to do is find sounds that I can hear being in this beat, but add purpose to it. Like they don't, I don't want to, like this one, for example but I don't know what it would add to it. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't fit my idea. So I'm not gonna add it for now, but if I wanna use it later, I can just remember that. So this is what I was trying to explain earlier, where I like to basically keep it simple, keep it, keep it somewhat repetitive for like six, or I guess seven bars out of the eight. And then I like to have my little deviation at the end, but that's not, that's not like a set rule. I don't want you guys to limit that to your own production. Um, I think you should try out experimenting with different parts and making some parts crazy and some parts not. But that's like a general rule of thumb if you feel like you can't control how much you're overdoing things. Because you can overdo things, it's just the quantity. You got to make sure that it's not too prevalent in your whole beat. You just got to make sure that everything has a flow to it. So now what I want to add, since I have that bass, this is like a foundation. A tom is acting right now as a snare. Add a nice little kick to it. So I want to keep this bounce right here. And then we take this part out and maybe move it back here. Let's hear that sounds. So notice how it's like a call, instant reply. The tom hits right here. And then we have emptiness. There's no response. It's like the tom is like said something and the kick had to soak that in. That motherfucker needs therapy. He was like, damn, they just said some real shit about me. Let me soak this shit in. And then they say something else right here too. Listen. Damn. And then they finally reply. But it's the same shit. This motherfucker's hard headed. So, boom, we move on to the next shit, right? And then he kind of fighting back. He kind of arguing a little bit. He defending himself. He's gaslighting. But it's not that good, though. Like this velocity a little low. So, I'm going to turn it up. Turn the gaslighting up. Boom. And then we're going to copy paste. That's a nice rhythm right there. This is the deviation right here. This kick pattern is so different, or it's not so different, but it's a little bit of a deviation from like this. This left one is moved over to the right by one. <laughs> but that timing, that small change in timing, is like your brain is noticing these patterns, right? But you're giving them that, that comfortability of having that repetition. So you have this repetition this whole way, boom. Your brain's comfortable. It's like, okay, I like this. And then you get a little switch up. So it's a little surprise. It's a little treat. But it's not too far to where your brain's like, what the fuck just happened? You know what I'm saying? It's like a cool, cool little surprise. It kind of disrupts that boringness. So I want this to act kind of like a hi-hat, but... Oh, wait, I kind of like that, though. All right, hold on. We're going to do it over here. And you can get all these sounds on the same website that you're going to get the freak. So I'm going to do boom, first note, then it's going to be a little silent. Boom, one sixth roll leading into this next note. And then we just kind of have that repeat. 
boom and then we might add like something to make it a little different towards the end let's see now what we can do to kind of make this uh hi-hat pattern not so boring add one every now and then but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of delay on it so that way it kind of has like a different feeling to it boom like this But I want to limit how often it plays. So I'm going to delete every other one. And now I'm looking to basically fill some of these gaps right here where you don't see notes. Let me change the theme so you can see better. All right. Oh my God. My bad. I just flashbang somebody. My bad. It's going to be like a snare that is playing in between the tom. So it's kind of weird, but it's cool. And I'm going to leave this last one empty. Now I'm going to look for a perk loop. So this is nice and I'm going to use this, but I'm going to filter it out so it doesn't have so much body, so much dent. And I like to use this free plugin called Place It. It makes it sound like it's placed somewhere and you get to pick what. So boom, say I wanted this motherfucker to sound like it was in a boom box and then we're going to go in a vehicle and we're going to go in a van. That's how I'm feeling. This would it sound like with no effects. And this would it sound like with it. Boom. So now it's less heavy. There's not a lot of low end. this taught you guys something you know what i'm saying everything has its purpose like i said this melody is from that free kit i have a lot of other things in the works so hopefully you guys enjoy the videos that are coming up and i may or may not be working on a little kit or something if we can get this video to 69 likes then i'll do a breakdown of how i made this jersey beat that i'm about to play right now